Happy Friday, Baker Babes. I'm so glad to see you again. I hope you got to listen to the story yesterday and are excited to find out a little bit more about Mrs. Piggle Wiggle and what she does to help this very irritating little boy named Philip. Um, I hope you all are having a fantastic day and are getting ready to have a weekend where you're not doing any school stuff at home. Make sure to take some time to enjoy it. I know today's kind of a yucky day. So hopefully you guys can have a good weekend and we'll have some nice weather. Let's catch up. Philip's room was so messy and she was in there such a long time picking up and imagining terrible things that she finally decided not to send for the magic show off powder. That old powder was too far dangerous to use on a sensitive, intelligent little boy like Philip. And anyway, Philip showing off was really very clever and maybe someday he'd be on the stage. Then the front door crashed open. A loud voice yelled, Mom, hey mom, where are you? And Philip was home from school. Mrs. Carmody rushed downstairs and sure enough, there was Philip, very much alive and visible, sitting at the kitchen table, wolfing down gingerbread and milk. His back was toward his mother, but she could see that one sleeve was ripped out of the sweater. Philip, his mother said, what in the world happened to your sweater? Fell off my bike, Philip said through a mouthful of gingerbread. Oh, sweetheart, his mother said, running to him. Did you hurt yourself? Oh, not much, Philip said. Kind of tore my pants, though, and he ripped and ripped one of my new school shoes. See, he held out one leg and showed his mother a pant leg ripped jaggedly to the knee. He held out the other and showed her his brown Oxford with a large tear over the instep. He also had a cut over his eye, a skin place on his nose, and blood on his chin. Oh, Philip, his mother said, you might have been killed. Were you hit by a car? Uh-uh, Philip said. Did some boy push you? Gosh, no, Philip said. Well, then what did happen? His mother asked. Oh, nothing, Philip drained his glass of milk. Can I have another piece of gingerbread, Mom? Certainly, said his mother. But first, I want to know about, what the, ac about the accident with your bicycle. Well, Philip said, if you really want to know. I was sitting in the basket of my bike, riding down Mission Hill backwards, singing Polly Wally Doodle, and I saw the bread truck coming. And I guess I didn't turn soon enough. And I ran into the Wallace's iron fence and I caught my shoe on the pedal and my pants on the picket and I hit my eye on the handlebars. And I don't know what else happened, but boy, you should have heard the kids and that old bread man laugh. No doubt, said his mother dryly. Now you go upstairs, change your trousers and your shoes. Bring me the trousers to mend. Take the torn shoe down to Mr. Risotta and ask him if he can put a patch on it. And on your way home, stop at Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's and she has, cause she has something for me. Do you know where Mrs. Piggle Wiggle lives? Sure I do, Philip said. We play down there all the time. What's she got for you? Never you mind, his, said his mother. Just don't forget to stop by there. Now scoot. A little after 5.30, Mrs. Carmody happened to look out the kitchen window and saw Philip coming up the drive, followed by a crowd of children. On his head, he was carrying a shoe. Balanced on the toe of the shoe was a small jar. Sitting on the jar was a little green frog. When Philip saw his mother's face at the window, he called out, Hey, Mom, look it! Watch me! I'm going to jump over the wheelbarrow with all this stuff on my head. Philip, don't! cried his mother. Philip is a mess. Look at this kid. I also I don't know how he doesn't get hurt more often. But he couldn't hear her, and she watched horrified as he made a run for the wheelbarrow, caught his foot in the garden hose, and fell backwards into the rhododendron bush. The small jar from Mrs. Piggle Wiggle flew up in the air and landed on the concrete with a crash. Mrs. Carmody dashed out, knelt down, and began picking little pieces of broken glass out of the spilled white powder. Having extricated himself from the rhododendron bush, Philip said, Gee, Mom, I'm sorry I busted it. I didn't mean to. Don't talk, his mother said briskly. Go in and get me a clean white envelope out of my desk and the spatula off the stove. Hurry. While Philip was gone, Mrs. Carmody carefully pushed the white powder into a little mound and held her hand over it to keep the wind from blowing it away. When Philip brought her the envelope and the spatula, she scooped up all the powder in the envelope, all but about half a teaspoon. This she carefully lifted into the palm of her hand and blew it at Philip. Hey, what do you think you're doing? He said, rubbing his eyes and coughing. Something very wise, I'm sure, said his mother. Just then, Mrs. Car Mr. Carmody's, ca Carmody's car turned into the driveway. 
Immediately, Philip jumped up in the wheelbarrow and yelled, Watch me, Dad! I'm going to stand on my head in the wheelbarrow. I'm going to stand on my head and say the alphabet backwards. Mrs. Carmody looked at the wheelbarrow, but it was suddenly empty. There was no one there. Not only that, but there was no sound either. Mr. Carmody got out of the car and said, Where's Philip? Wasn't he here just a moment ago? Yes, he was, said Mrs. Carmody, smiling a secret smile. Where did he go? Well, I want him to put the hose in that wheelbarrow in the garage, said Mr. Carmody. I'll tell him, said Mrs. Carmody. He should be back in a minute or so. She and Mr. Carmody went into the house and closed the kitchen door. Philip, quite red in the face from standing on his head in the wheelbarrow and a horse, and horse from reciting the alphabet backwards and forwards, called after them, Hey, Mom and Dad, look at me! But they didn't even glance at him. They acted as if they didn't even hear him. Hey, you kids, look at me! He called to the children who had followed him home from Mrs. Piggle Wiggles, but nobody answered. They just turned and walked out of the yard. Slowly, he righted himself, climbed out of the wheelbarrow, and went into the kitchen. How come you and Dad didn't watch my trick? He asked his mother, who was busy at the stove. She said, we didn't see you doing any tricks. Now go and put away the hose in the wheelbarrow and sleep up that broken glass. Dinner will be ready in about five minutes, and it's your favorite. You mean Frankfurters? Hot dogs. And baked beans and brown bread, Phillips asked. That's right, said his mother. Hot diggity, said, his, said Philip. Now you know why I like, that, like this book. Reaching into the broom closet, his mother took out the broom and dustpan and handed them, they handed them to him. Here, she said, very relieved that he was visible again. Sleep that glass first. Philip took the broom, held it up over his shoulder, and began making loud zooming noises. Hey, Mom, he yelled. Watch me. I'm a jet plane. Here I go for the takeoff. And as he said, watch me, he began to disappear. With the takeoff, he was gone. Humming contently, his mother took the lid off the steamer and poked the brown bread. At dinner, he disappeared three times. The first time was when he turned his chair around, crouched down on the seat, and said, Look at me, I'm a big gorilla in a cage. Toss me in a banana, somebody. He disappeared just after, toss me. Mr. Carmody almost jumped out of his chair. Meg, Meg, he yelled at Mrs. Carmody. The boy's gone. There must be a trap door to that chair. Don't get hysterical, Jordan, said Mrs. Carmody. He'll be back. And he was in about two minutes. The next morning after he was dressed, Philip climbed on the banister and yelled at Connie. Hey, Connie, look it. I'm sliding on the banister frontward, sitting up. Then he disappeared. And he didn't come back into focus until everybody else had finished breakfast and his poached eggs were quite cold. His mother noticed he had a large purple bump over his left eye. As he slid into the chair, Philip said, Nobody in this whole family cares what happens to me. My whole skull is probably cracked, but a lot of you care. But, but a lot of you care. But a lot you care. Let me read that again. My whole skull is probably cracked, but a lot you care. Quiet, roared Mr. Carmody. Mrs. Carmody said, eat your eggs, dear. It's getting late. As she spoke to him, she leaned over and sprinkled some of the show-off powder in his hair. Turning around and giving her suspicious look, Philip said, what you doing to my hair, Mom? Just smoothing it down, said his mother, smiling dreamily. During geography, while Mrs. Miss Periwinkle was standing with her back to the class, drawing a map on the blackboard, Philip stood up on a seat, wiggled his ears, looked cross-eyed, looked like an ape, and scratched himself. All surefire tricks for making his classmates giggle, but nobody laughed at all. In fact, nobody even looked at him because he wasn't there. During recess, he put a whole package of bubble gum in his mouth and blew a bubble bigger than his head. But even though the children were all right around him, nobody pointed or laughed or said one thing. Because, of course, they couldn't see him. Then the bubble burst and got in Philip's hair and face all gummy. And then the children laughed because he was back in focus again. But Philip didn't think it was funny at all, especially when the school nurse rubbed his face and neck and head with benzine, which burned. After school, he didn't feel very funny. His head hurt and so did his elbow. So he rode his bike home, sitting on his seat the ordinary way. Bobby Westover and Billy Markle rode beside him and they talked quite solemnly about baseball. Except once Billy rode fast down Mission Hill with no hands yelling, help, help, I'm out of control. My engine's conked out, my landing gear's stuck. Call the crash crew. Bobby and Philip laughed like anything until Mrs. Allen backed out of her garage and almost hit Billy who couldn't stop and ran into a tree. Mrs. Allen turned pure white and shook was, and was very mad. She said, Billy Markle, I'm going to call your mother up and tell her what a little show off you are. 
You almost got killed and you're, you almost wrecked my car. And you've practically given me a nervous breakdown. Billy, who was crying, said, Well, look at me. My shirt's tore and my nose is bleeding and my bike's wrecked. Mrs. Allen said, Go into the kitchen. I'll fix you up, but don't bleed all over my kitchen linole my clean linoleum. Bobby and Philip called goodbye to Billy, but he didn't hear them. As they rode down the hill around the corner down toward Philip's toward Philip's house, Philip said, Poor Billy, what a show off. Chapter two, the crybaby cure. I'm not gonna read a whole lot of this, but I'll read a couple pages. Mrs. Foxglove was baking brownies, thick, chewy, chocolatey, nutty brownies, the kind her four children loved. She slid the last pan into the oven, lifted Solomon, Solomon the black cat down off the kitchen stool where he was drooling up at Alma Gluck the, and, and the canary and sat down herself. It was a very dreary February day. The sky was gray, the snow in the yard was gray and slushy, and a cold, raw wind was swooshing around the house. Mrs. Foxglove hoped that the children had not left their galoshes in the school bus and had remembered to put on their mittens. She was especially worried about Melody, whose eyes and nose always seemed to be so red and chapped. She sighed and stroked Solomon, who had jumped into her lap, and then she pushed, pushed him off onto the floor and opened the oven door. The brownies were baking beautifully. She switched the bottom pans to the top shelf and the top pans to the bottom shelf and then closed the door and put the milk on to heat for the children's cocoa. She was just stirring in the cocoa when from way down the street she heard a noise like a fire siren. Woo wee When the noise getting what went the noise getting louder and closer, Mrs. Foxglove sighed, <sighs> opened the back door. Cornell, her oldest boy, who was eleven, came dashing up the back steps, gave his mother a hug, and said, I smell brownies, zowie! Harvard, who was nine, stamped the snow off his galoshes and said, Another hundred in spelling, Mom. How many brownies can I have? Emmy, who was six, said, I lost another tooth today. Can I chew brownies? How many can I have? Melody, who was eight, came shuffling up the walk, her mouth wide open, her, so wide open her mother could almost see her stomach. Mother, she bawled, the kids are teasing me. <sighs> Mrs. Foxglove said, hurry up, Melody. I want to shut the back door before the house gets cold. I could hurry, Melody sobbed as she wiped her red nose on her sleeve. And fell d I fell down my, and my knee hurt so I can't hardly walk. All right then, said her mother. I'll shut the door and you can take as long as you'd like. She closed the door. Instantly a wail like a dying hyena filled the air and Melanie came charging back up the back steps and threw herself against the back door yelling, Let me in! I'm freezing! Mrs. Foxglove opened the door and Melanie, who, Melody, who had been leaning heavily against it, fell into the kitchen. Emmy and Harvard and Cornell, who were sitting on the floor, taking off their galoshes, laughed uproariously. Melody lay stretched out on the floor like a squash spider bawling. Mrs. Foxglove pushed her aside a little with her foot and shut the door. Immediately, Melody screamed, You kicked me! My old mother kicked me! Mrs. Foxglove said, Melody, dear, I only pushed you a little with my foot so I could close the door. Solomon walked over and licked her ear with his rough little tongue. Ouch, she shrieked. Solomon scratched me right here on my ear. He did not, Emmy said. He just licked your ear, you old ball baby. My ear is bleeding, Melanie snuffed. I probably get babies. Gee, Mom, isn't she awful, said Cornell. She's the biggest baby in the whole school. Nobody likes her. They do so, said Melody, sitting up and wiping her eyes with her mittens. Oh, they do not, said Harvard. They call you old, wet, wash rag foxglove. That's what you call me, said Colby, said Melody. Do you hear that, Mommy? He called the old, wet, wash rag foxglove all the time, she began to cry again. Mrs. Foxglove said, Oh, my goodness, I smell the brownies. Out of my way, everybody. Pick up your things and take them to the coat closet. 
The children gathered up their galoshes and coats and mittens and caps and hurried out of the kitchen. All but Melody, who was lying on her back on the floor, her mittened hands scrunched into her eyes, crying. I'm going to stop right there. Hmm, I wonder what Mrs. Piggle Wiggle will do to help sweet Miss, Mel sweet Miss Melody, who is the crybaby. Hmm, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you again on Monday. Love you guys.